Yo, what's up everyone? This video, we're gonna be talking about how to get user input. So far we talked about doing output, but input is really like the foundation for actually making useful applications. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna be doing now. But you know what else is super useful? <laughs> Monday.com. Monday.com is our sponsor here. And what they do is they offer a project management solution that will allow you to keep track of all your tasks for a project with basically unlimited customization options, color coding, estimates, dates, integration with other apps, and even having a useful mobile application and much, much more. Monday.com is a pretty sweet application. I'd highly recommend Monday.com. I'm saying it from my heart when I would say I would recommend Monday.com. They by far have the most intuitive, beautiful interface and they really make getting work done fun. <laughs> Sounds cheesy, but for real, go try them out. You won't be disappointed. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description, and when you click that link, it helps me out a lot too. So go sign up for them, and then they'll give me a bunch of money, and then we'll all be happy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But seriously, go sign up. <laughs> and now let's get started with user input. Okay, so user input is actually really easy inside of C Sharp. You just do console.read, and there's read, read key, and read line. We're gonna use read line just like we've been using write line works a very similar way. There is one different thing you have to do here though, and I'll show you in a second. Because if we run this, make sure you save, it's gonna ask us for an input, that's why it's not doing anything right now. And when we type that out and press enter, it just prints yo, nothing happens. The reason nothing happens is because read line is an example of a method that has a return. What do I mean by return? Well, if you go to the method definition, you can do that by going in these parentheses, holding control, shift, and hitting space. <laughs> That's a complicated way of doing it, or you could just retype the parentheses, and it'll basically describe how this method works. This thing returns a string, which is just a sequence of characters, what we're typing in. This is different than right line. For right line, you can see it's void. It doesn't return anything. Anytime a method returns something, we have to do something with that return value or it just disappears. We're basically just reading that line and then it disappears in the nether. We don't want that to happen, so what we need to do is we need to assign that to a variable. So this is going to be something new. If you've never worked with variables, they basically store a value for you. The easiest way to create a variable is to say var and then give it a name, x and then use the equal sign, which is actually called the assignment operator. This doesn't mean this is equal to this. It actually means that this, the return value, is assigned to x. A Little bit different, and we'll get into that more once we talk about comparisons, but for now, just know that this is the assignment operator. So what's going on with this var thing? You see when I hover over it, it says it's dot string. This is because C Sharp is a statically typed programming language. That means every variable is given a data type up front. The var just makes it a little easier for us. If we don't know what that type's gonna be, it'll figure it out for us based on what we're assigning to it. But since we know it's gonna be a string because it says string right there, as well as because read line returns a string, we could actually just go here and say string instead. It's a little bit more clear because now we know what type we're working with throughout the rest of our program. Now when we execute this, it's still not gonna do anything because now we're just storing it back into X and then we're not using X in anywhere in our program. So what we need to do is we need to output X. So you can say console.writeline and then throw X inside of here. Now we're getting some dynamicness because when we run this, the value we type in is what's going to be printed out. So if I say I love tacos to death, it prints out that exact value. This allows for some cool applications. So for example, I could say, let's say this is your name. And then what we can do is we could say, hello. Using plus signs, you can concatenate strings. So we can say, hello, Caleb, for example, and then an exclamation mark. Make sure I save, sorry. And it says, hello, Caleb. And it doesn't have a space there. We just need to put a space right after hello. There's actually a prettier way you could do this. And you could put a dollar sign right here and then just get rid of all this stuff. And what we're gonna do is just put curly braces and pass in name right there. So that's called string interpolation. We're gonna talk about that later on, but for now you can just copy that. So now when we run this, pass in Caleb, and it says, hello Caleb, right there. Awesome, so now you get a little bit of how to create dynamic applications by taking user input. This is awesome. This is one way we're going to make dynamicness in our application. Other ways is reading content from files, databases, system settings, whatever it might be. This is important to make applications actually useful. So thank you guys. Hopefully this is helpful and I will see you in the next video. Please be sure to check out the description for links to the sponsor as well as who knows what else. 
and there's a super loud car driving by, so sorry if that was really annoying. 